Hello viewers, welcome to the Bachelor course of Population Studies. Today, we will discuss politicization of census in India. Politicization means to give a political touch to any phenomena. Census is a scientific exercise relating to the collection of data of the population of a country. It is a very extensive public activity relating to population data. It provides the largest amount of data used by researchers, policy makers and administrators. In India also, the census is the most important source of demographic data which is widely used for social and economic planning in the country. However, it leaves a deep impact on religious and ethnic identities. The politicization of data is one of the major dangers that faces researchers and policy makers today as every political party tries to fudge the numbers to give themselves the advantage. Government plays a devious politics by misreading the census data. Indian government spend enormous resources to collect data. It spent 12 billion and 22 billion rupees on decennial censuses in 2001 and 2011 respectively. Yet, they appeared reluctant to release it. The latest decennial census data on religion, for example, which were released on 25th August 2015, were collected almost half a decade ago in 2011. During the past 15 years, government of both the national parties have on more than one occasion deferred to political expediency on the question of releasing demographic data disaggregated by communities. In the process, government have contributed to the politicization of statistics. The troubled past of the census data on religion reveals systematic problems in so far as the statistical wing of the government is insufficiently insulated from politics. Next is types of politicization of census. First one is relating to religion. Religion has been a regular and important item in Indian census since the first census in 1871. However, the details of religion data have varied over time primarily in tune with the socio-political agenda of the rulers. Apart from their effect on the details of data on religion, political factors also played a significant role regarding accuracy of census returns in this regard. Second one is relating to caste. Caste is seen as an indicator of occupation, social standing and intellectual ability. It is therefore necessary to include it in the census if the census is to serve the purpose of giving the government the information it needed in order to make optimum use of the people under its administration. Those who support inclusion of caste for census purposes argue that since caste is an inseparable feature of India's social life, it deserves to be reflected in the census returns. The opponents believe that caste data would work to erode the imagined solidarity of Hindu society. It is important to note that it is mainly the people from upper caste who are against census by caste while those from lower caste invariably welcome such an effort. 
the opponents of the caste based census are least concerned about developing scholarship on the relationship between caste and under development such an illiberal and callous attitude of the academicians and politicians indicate that they are non committal to any fundamental social change in indian society by not making systematic attempts of documenting the caste scenario through the census the indian state is seizing from the oppressed the liberal democratic space that they have earned through their struggle the next thing is causes of politicization of census first one is ambiguous definition of tribes or ambiguous criteria the ambiguous criteria used to identify tribes are conducive to manipulation there are at least five ways in which tribal head counts have been manipulated in maharashtra a non tribal community and masses claimed to belong to a neighboring tribe hoping that enumeration in the census as a tribe would enable them to buy tribal land this resulted in a very high growth of the tribe's population in the next census and led to the statistical submergence of the original tribe second one is manipulation of census data in states such as nagaland and manipur tribes have in the past resorted to inflating of their population to increase their share in legislative seats and welfare benefits manipulation also played a role in a case of forcible assimilation co-option in nagaland a tribal communities population registered an unusually high growth rate in the 1991 census when it was trying to assert its identity as distinct from a larger tribe third one is weak state institutions our main state sponsor bodies such as nsso which are mainly engaged in the process of data collection are not working independently due to political interference by the ruling parties it results in the manipulation of collection and publication of data fourth is insurgencies in tribal areas due to insurgencies in tribal and remote areas people do not cooperate during the census which results in unsatisfactory collection of data fifth is contest over the religious identity religion in india is characterized by a diversity of religious beliefs and practices indian subcontinent is the birthplace of some of the world's major religions namely hinduism buddhism jainism and sikhism throughout india's history religion has been an important part of the country's culture according to the 2011 census 79.8% of the population of india practices hinduism and 14.2% adheres to islam while the remaining adheres to other religions christianity sikhism buddhism jainism and various indigenous ethnically bound faiths six is absence of objective criteria the criteria which is opted at the time of collection of data is not objective each political party collect data according to its suitability and advantages data is collected subjectively seventh is illiteracy of certain caste certain castes are illiterate and are not aware of their rights and representation in population census eighth is poor socio economic condition of certain caste the task of harmonization of state list of castes 
has remained unattended for decades. Likewise, errors in Nagaland census accumulated for three decades before attracting the government's attention. Similar problems remain unaddressed in other states. Unfortunately, tribes are often unable to contest government statistics because of their illiteracy, poor socio-economic condition and limited representation in the bureaucracy. Next is limited representation of certain caste. Unfortunately, the government data for marginalized communities which need greater state support are often of inferior quality. Poor statistics vitiate development planning and contribute to the continued underdevelopment of the tribes. Yet, the accumulated errors in official statistics about tribes have received insufficient attention because tribes are a marginalized minority in the country. Politicization before independence Census was one of the main tools used by the British to understand the Indian population. Attempts were made as early as at the beginning of the 19th century to estimate the population in various regions of the country, but these were methodologically flawed and led to grossly erroneous conclusions. It was not until 1872 that a planned comprehensive census was attempted. This was done under the direction of Henry Beverly, Inspector General of Registration in Bengal. The primary purpose given for the taking of the census, that of governmental preparedness to deal with disaster situation, was both laudable and logical. However, the census went well beyond counting heads or even inquiring into sex ratios or general living conditions. Among the many questions were inquiries regarding nationality, race, tribe, religion and caste. On the question of race, nationality, caste and religion, it could be argued that these figures were needed to allow analysis of the various areas in an attempt to predict internal unrest. However, there does not appear to have been any use made of the figures from that perspective. The Hindu-Muslim statistical conflict in India began with the politicization of religion and census during the colonial period. Muslims have feared the Hindu majority since the late 19th century. The Hindu fear of the fecund Muslim goes back to the first decade of the 20th century. The introduction of the communal electorates in 1909 and the communal partition of Bengal in 1905 accentuated the political significance of demographic statistics. Interestingly, the same colonial census data that convinced Muslims that they were at the mercy of an unassailable Hindu majority also convinced Hindus that they were a dwindling community soon to be eclipsed by Muslim. In 1941, before the communal partition of British India, all communities inflated their headcounts in the undivided provinces of Punjab and Bengal. Eastern India also witnessed a struggle over the religious identity of tribes, who were seen as a swing community. Next is politicization after independence. After independence, the Indian Punjab witnessed a protracted Hindu Sikh power struggle disguised as a Punjabi-Hindi language conflict. The Kashmir Valley continues to be unprepared to accept any headcount that affects the Muslim majority 
status of Jammu and Kashmir or weakens the electoral dominance of Kashmiri Muslims in the state legislative assembly. Assamis, that is Hindu, have similar concerns regarding Muslim Bengalis. The ongoing debate on extending affirmative action, a quota system for public job, public university placings and elected assemblies to schedule caste, Christian and Muslim is likely to further politicize the census. Census data covering the period 2001 to 2011 shows that the Hindu population in the last decade has decreased and slumped to 79.8% of the country. On the other hand, Muslims now comprises 14.2% of the country. Next one is bad effects of politicization of census. First is political interference. The growing political interference in the government's statistical machinery has deepened the communal crisis in the country. This interference is reflected in the politically motivated timing of the release of various data sets and reports as well as the disregard of expert advice on the design of data collection exercises. Second is communal crisis. The hesitation to release data on religion may indicate that the communal crisis is emerging in India. In some Indian states such as Jammu and Kashmir, Assam, Nagaland and until the 1980s Punjab, the intensity of power struggles between communities has already affected the quality of government statistics. Third one is danger for national integration. The politicization of caste is dangerous for national integration. Politicization of religion is also very dangerous to the society and it would hamper the integration of the country. Caste based politics should be wiped out as there cannot be any place for caste based politics in any democracy. Fourth is difficult to ascertain people below poverty line. In case the census data is politicized, then it is not possible to collect correct information regarding people below poverty line. People living in kacha houses without electricity, etc. Next is employment of people without the exact information. It is not possible to collect data about people who are employed, unemployed or underemployed. Next is hindered the process of welfareism. It has been noticed that the unavailability of data on caste has hindered the process of welfareism several times. Next is inability to take decision. The absence of correct data regarding population makes the process of arriving at decisions more complicated and difficult. The delay in the publication of religion data in India reflects a deeper problem. Many a time the Supreme Court of India and several state governments have expressed their inability regarding decision making due to want of authentic data on caste. Next is no implementation of policies. Many backward class commissions including the historic national commission of backward classes established in 1953 have recorded the need for caste based data for the effective implementation of the reservation policy. Neither the advocates nor the opponents of the reservation policy in India have any reliable statistical data on caste. Next is no use of technology. Unfortunately, information technology and advanced statistical tools cannot resolve problems that have roots in a divisive 
political culture. Information is produced and consumed within a larger ecosystem that includes both the government and people. Next is no social change. The opponents of the caste-based census are least concerned about developing scholarship on the relationship between caste and underdevelopment. Such an illiberal and callous attitude of the academicians and politicians indicate that they are non-committal to any fundamental social change in the Indian society. Suggestions or recommendations regarding politicization. First one is autonomy to government bodies. Full autonomy should be given to government bodies regarding collection and publication of data. These bodies should be free from any type of political interference. Second one is participation of NGOs stakeholders. The participation of non-governmental stakeholders needs to be encouraged both during the collection of data and dissemination of the same. Third is timely publication of data. Data of census of population should be published at proper time without any delay. The ruling political parties should not delay the publication of data deliberately for serving their own interest. Fourth is unbiased data collection. There are wide ranging repercussions of inaccurate or improper interpretation of data. For example, every 10 years a major census is done in the United States. The results are used to help in determining the number of congressional seats that are assigned to each district. It is also used to determine the location of new roads, schools, libraries, nursing homes, hospitals, daycare centers, parks, etc. Next one is simple criteria of data collection. The data collection can involve a multitude of decisions by data collectors. While preparing the data collection plan, one should try to eliminate as many subjective choices as possible by operationally defining the parameters needed to do the job correctly. Sixth one is proper counting of data. A census of the population has become indispensable to any modern government. How many people are there? What are their basic socio-economic characteristics? Where do they live? And how are they affected by the process of social and biological change? These questions arise daily in the governments of all industrially developed countries as well as the developing countries. To sum up, it can be stated that the collection and publication of population data by the census organization is often characterized by strong political overtones. In most of the developing plural countries like India, the religious and ethnic minorities are often given much less attention in census details as compared to even the subgroups of the majority population of the country. Gradually, such minorities get hidden from the view or are projected as mere variant of the majority population toward which the design and detail of population census data make their own contribution in a significant manner. Strengthening the autonomy of government statistical wing, though essential, is insufficient to address the problem. Other government bodies that contribute to transparency in the public sector, such as the Information Commission, need to be strengthened. The participation of non-governmental stakeholders need to be encouraged both during data collection and dissemination. Unless these steps are taken, community level data in India will continue to be amenable to politicization.
which ultimately cuts to the credibility of the government data in general. That's all for today. In the next lecture, we will continue with some related issue. Thank you. Thank you.